Hey everybody, Anthony here from Crazy Tech Lab and also welcome to those of you joining from my article over on Forbes as well. And today it is the big one because we are reviewing AMD's Radeon RX 6900 XT, which is of course its brand new flagship desktop graphics card, the most powerful one it's ever made for the desktop PC gaming. And we will be comparing it against Nvidia's flagship as well, the RTX 3090 and just how these cards stack up in games at various resolutions with and without ray tracing, both in ray traced games and in normal rasterization as well. So a whole bunch of stuff to get through today. And uh, ultimately the king of desktop performance computing is, or the crown, should I say, of desktop, desktop performance computing is at stake. And today we will know who is the actual king of desktop graphics cards. So. Quite a bit to get through then, and uh, obviously this card sits on the top of the uh, RX 6800 XT and 6800. You can also see my reviews elsewhere in this channel, as well as NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080, and 3090 as well. So there's a whole bunch of comparisons to do here. So should you buy this card versus the RTX 3090? How much more performance does it offer over the RTX 3080 and 6800 XT from AMD as well? So is it worth the extra cash? How fast is it in various resolutions? A whole bunch of stuff to talk about. And uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to AMD for sending over the sample. Uh, very, very much appreciated. And um, also, if you prefer to look at graphs uh, on in an article or just uh, read my ramblings rather than hear me rambling on in a video, you can check my article over on Forbes as well using the link in the description. So, first things first, before we get to the actual benchmarking though, uh, do subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to have your support. And uh, just click on the, uh, the little button down below, the little red button to subscribe, and also like this video if you find it informative, uh, which hopefully you do, because I spent a lot of time doing it. And um, also don't forget to turn on notifications so you are aware when I upload new videos, because I'll be doing a whole bunch more performance testing. Now that all these crazy launches are over, I can do some performance testing with both the new RX cards from AMD, RX, uh, Radeon RX cards, and Nvidia's RTX series cards in a whole bunch of mini ITX cases as well. I know a lot of you, a lot of you have been asking me about that. They are coming. I just need people to stop sending me graphics cards and processors, and then I'll be able to <laughs> crack on and actually do some uh, do some other um, interesting testing with those cases and thermals and things. So all that coming up. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And to start with then, let's take a look at the specifications. So the price for the RX 6900 XT is $699. That's obviously a fair amount less than the RTX 3090 and uh, around $250, sorry, three, uh, yeah, $350 more than the RX 6800 XT. So that is quite a markup. Um, however, you still only need the dual eight pin power connectors and you're still only dealing with a card that's 267 millimeters long and is a two and a half slot cooler. So uh, the only one that is a standard uh, two slot cooler is the RX 6800. So moving further on down the specs table then, you've got eight more compute units than the uh, RX 6800 XT. Uh, the boost and game frequencies uh, that AMD likes to call them, they are actually the same at 2250 megahertz and 2015 megahertz. You again get eight more ray traced uh, accelerators and uh, slightly higher uh, peak texture fill rate as well. The, uh, the ROPs uh, remain the same, but you get more stream processors, you get more texture units. Uh, GPU power, interestingly, uh, is still at 300 watts, um, but you, you, uh, AMD basically recommends a, uh, an 850 watt power supply here rather than just 750 for the RX 6800 XT. Uh, memory speed, exactly the same. And once again, you're, uh, you're peaking at the 16 gigabyte uh, mem maximum memory size here, which is the same for the other two cards as well, interestingly. Uh, memory type, again, GDDR6 for all three cards, same 256-bit uh, memory interface. And um, as we've already mentioned, the length and slot size are the same uh, for the RX 6900 XT as they are on the 6800 XT. So that's pretty much it then, as far as what I've got to say about the specifications and everything else. Um, this is the box it comes in. Uh, nothing too fancy, look kind of funky inside, uh, which we'll uh, have a look in a second. I'll roll that video now for you to have a look at the, uh, the actual unboxing. So plenty of cool stuff. Inside you get a, uh, a mouse mat, which I've got on display here. 
and uh, well, not plenty of cool stuff. I mean, that's pretty much it, isn't it? You might expect a bit more from that for a uh, for a, uh, a flagship graphics card landing on your desk. But ultimately, we're here to uh, to land, uh, not to land, to discuss the performance numbers. So, without further ado, let's get on and take a look. Okay, so Metro Exodus is first up then at 1440p with Hairworks off and ray tracing disabled. And the uh, 6900 XT, a, uh, the chart topping result on the minimum 99th percentile, which is great. Um, however, the RTX 3090 did manage a significantly higher average frame rate, which is kind of the similar situation to what we saw with the um, 6800 XT and the RTX 3080. So um, it's great to see AMD at the top of the graph here, but the average frame rate is uh, much higher with NVIDIA. So moving on to ray tracing enabled with DLSS enabled as well, again at 1440p in Metro, Exod Metro Exodus. And the uh, RX 6900 XT obviously falls way behind uh, thank, uh, due to the performance that uh, DLSS enables. And uh, we're looking at a similar performance to the RTX 2080 Ti. Even the RTX 3080 obviously significantly faster on the minimum and average 99th percentiles. So stepping up to 4K with ray tracing disabled again and the RX 6900 XT was pretty much level pegging with the RTX 3080 with a minimum 99th percentile of 48 frames per second and 72 frames per second on the average. The RTX 3090 was uh, noticeably quicker on both minimum and uh, average frame rates here with a significantly faster average frame rate again. So in the next test, we've got a ray tracing enabled and DLSS enabled again at 4K in Metro, Metro Exodus. And here the RX 6900 XT really didn't put in a great performance. It wasn't really that much faster than the RX 6800 XT. And uh, in fact, even the RTX 2080 was slower with DLSS enabled and ray tracing enabled. And obviously the RTX 3090 uh, with a huge advantage, uh, nearly double the performance um, overall as well. So moving on to Far Cry New Dawn then, 1440p. And uh, I honestly expected the RX 6900 XT to perform a bit better here. I have rerun this benchmark. I know there were some performance issues with the, uh, with the release driver, but barely any more performance than the RX 6800 XT here. And uh, also moving up the graph, only the RTX 3080 and 3090 managed to offer significantly more performance. Um, Far Cry New Dawn at 4K, uh, leaning more on the graphics card here um, rather than perhaps some CPU limitations going in at 1440p. And the RX 6900 XT, um, pretty much the winner overall, the fastest minimum 99th percentile and pretty much matching the RTX 3090. So overall, a good result there for AMD. And uh, next up is... Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p with ray tracing disabled. And uh, another good result for AMD here. It was significantly faster than the RTX 3080 with a much higher minimum and average frame rate on the 99 percentiles. And uh, actually bettered the RTX 3090 on the average frame rate, but the latter managed a much higher minimum 99th percentile. So a bit of a mix mash there. And uh, moving on to 4K, again with ray tracing disabled and the, R the RX 6900 XT uh, not really offering that much more, for more performance over the RTX 3080. So if you can find an RTX 3080 for a few hundred dollars less, that's probably going to be the card you will want to go for. Um, however, even with the RTX 3090 here, that didn't really justify its price tag over the RTX 3080 either. Now, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider again and enabling... DLSS and ray trace shadows here and uh, obviously a, a significant advantage for Nvidia however the RX 6900 XT was significantly faster than the RX 6800 XT um, as well as the RTX 2080 Super and uh, also much faster on the average frame rate than the RTX 3070 as well but obviously if you're uh, if you've got a ray tracing and DLSS enabled card you're going to do much better there moving on to a Wolfenstein Youngblood then at 1440p obviously with ray tracing enabled cuz AMD doesn't support it in this game um, and the RX 6900 XT pretty much level pegging with the RTX 3080 which isn't great for AMD given that the two cards um, there's quite a disparity in the um, price obviously the RTX 3080 costs a lot less uh, and the RTX 3090 generally uh, justifying its price tag up there at the top with massive av average and minimum 99 percentiles 
Uh, moving up to 4K and uh, honestly expected the RX 6900 XT to perform a bit better here. It wasn't really that much faster than the RX 6800 XT and the RTX 3080 did perform a lot better on the average and uh, minimum 99 percentiles. But again, it is a very uh, heavily NVIDIA optimized title, so we can expect some bias there when we're looking at the NVIDIA cards, even without DLSS enabled. Moving on to Borderlands 3 then, and a, uh, a good result for AMD here with the RX 6900 XT. It was significantly faster than both the 6800 XT and the RTX 3080. However, um, NVIDIA seems to have a quite quite a boost on the uh, average frame rate here, as the average frame rate for the RTX 3080 was actually a bit faster. And the RTX 3090 was um, a little bit faster on the minimum, but significantly faster on the average frame rate again. Stepping out to 4K then, and uh, the RTX 3080 manages to pull ahead on both average and minimum 99th percentiles, and the RTX 3090, again, pretty much justifying its its uh, extra outlay there with a huge minimum and average 99th percentile. And uh, the 6900 XT, though, does offer a significant advantage over the RX 6800 XT, but whether, the, whether or not that advantage is worth the price difference is debatable, I think. Finally then, we're getting on to the power consumption, and one area that AMD is utterly dominant is power efficiency, because we are looking at significant power savings over both the RTX 3080 and especially over the RTX 3090 when you when all the bells and whistles are turned on. So the RTX 3090, sorry, RTX 6900 XT then, um, 439 watts, uh, which is more than 100 watts um, less than the RTX 3090. So again, we're looking at a significantly less power hungry card in the RX 6900 XT. And um, again, 6900 XT not really drawing that much power, uh, has to be said, than the RX 6800 XT. So um, it's a very power frugal, frugal card considering that you're getting more performance than the 6800 XT and significantly less power consumption than both the RTX 3080 and 3090. The thermals, um, again, AMD does a pretty good job here. The RTX 3090, I have to um, admit that that is the palette game rock. So it's a massive, um, pretty much a triple slot card, I think, with three fans. So not really um, comparable compared to the Founders Edition uh, 3090. Um, as you can see, even the RTX 3080 Founders Edition was significantly warmer by about three degrees. Um, and uh, it has to be said that the RX 6900 XT was very, very quiet in testing as well, apart from some coil wind. So generally, the uh, 6900 XT does a pretty good job, but it does get significantly warmer, it has to be said, than the RX 6800 XT. Okay, so what do we make of AMD's Radeon RX 6900 XT then? Well, I think it's fair to say that in a lot of benchmarks, it is snapping at the heels, matching or even bettering the RTX 3090, which is great news for AMD. It's Where it does so, it's also giving the RTX 3080 a bloody nose and also offers significant performance advantages over the RX 6800 XT 2 It also has a very low power consumption given the performance on offer and draws a heck of a lot less power than the RTX 3080 and 3090. It's, it was also very quiet in testing and keeps its thermals well in check, at least with this cooler. Now, this isn't the same across the board. In fact, I'd say that this uh, this card, above all others, by quite a long way, is one that you have to carefully consider before you reaching for your wallet, because in some situations, the RTX 3080 is faster, especially when DLSS is, is enabled, but even outside of that situation, the RTX 3080 is cheaper and faster in some benchmarks, which means that obviously the, RT, the RX 6800 XT isn't that far behind in those tests either. So overall then, it's an absolutely awesome card from AMD, but it is something that needs to be carefully considered before reaching for your wallet because it is not fast across the board. And ultimately, I think the crown does go to NVIDIA in this instance because the RTX 3090 is just quicker in a lot of benchmarks or a match for this card in, uh, in in situations where it doesn't perform that well. So overall then, it's a monster card from AMD, but not one that's uh, an uh, RTX 3090 killer across the board. Uh, I'd like to thank AMD for sending the sample and uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.